Welcome everyone to the Fordham Sports Analytics Roundup. I am your host, Chris Orlando. I'm here with Alex Korf, newly hired product manager at Draft Sharks, as well as most famous for his background working within um, Reddit, as he's provided many trade value and dynasty value trade value charts. So Alex, if you want to talk about any other experiences you have working within the, the space and you know how you got into data visualization. Yeah, sure. So I, uh, I definitely started out on Reddit. That was kind of my, my, my just, you know, lurking and then uh, saw some opportunity to make some cool things that some, some data visualization tools that would potentially help people in terms of trade charts. Uh, and then from there, people reached out. Uh, the, the Athletic wanted me to write a weekly column for them. So I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, at the time, I was doing it under the username, peaked in high school, and no one knew my name. Uh, and then they published my first article, and they they put my full name. And then they're like, that's okay, right? And I was like, well, it's okay now. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and then the same, uh, the guys at 4 for 4 asked me to do it last year. Uh, so very similar type trends looking at market analysis of where a player should be traded versus specific sources as well so you can kind of get that edge uh that's kind of how i got started and then the guys over at draft sharks reached out that they wanted a full-time guy to come over and help them make some new tools and clean up some of the, the ux and things like that and that's, that's where i am now that's awesome again congratulations for you know joining draft sharks that's a very you know well-known company within the fantasy football industry uh if you want to go more in depth about what you'll be doing there and what kind of content that you'll put it be putting out to your audience yeah, sure. So uh, a lot of what I'm going to be doing is going to be in the background, a fair amount of it. So it's going to be helping them. They're, they have several different algorithms on uh, well, what they're doing, right? They, they do it based on uh, not just linear ranks. They're using a uh, versus the player pool rank. It's called their DMVP. So making sure that the, the algorithm works for all iterations, including like auction drafts, uh, when you add IDP players, and then making sure that it also applies to Dynasty, tight end premium, super flex. So making sure all of that's really good. So I'm doing a lot of that, a lot of like just crunching away on numbers and not really putting out content for the short term. But I'm really excited to do a lot more backwards looking content, looking specifically at like volatility at the position and how that maybe relates to some best ball drafts. Because I think there's a lot of people like, like for example, at underdog tournaments, people will think, hey, you got to stack and you got to stack week 17 do you like what, what does that mean are we good at predicting who's going to be good at week 17 so i want to do a lot of backwards looking articles kind of analysis to help with future strategy uh that's some stuff i'm going to be working on for sure always going to keep doing trade value charts can't stop won't stop uh they're going on reddit they're going everywhere so definitely gonna be working on that a lot uh, just a little more and have more time to do some more analytical type writing which i'm pretty excited about i'm interested in hearing you know what's your what's your ideal approach to that now because you know, I've done a lot of uh, underdog best ball drafts throughout the season, and my my most common strategy would be stacking a lot of QB wide receiver. I don't I don't necessarily like going QB early, but you know what what is kind of your processes, and you know what kind of data analysis do you use going into that process? Sure. So I'm gonna kind of try and look at it from more of a team based approach. So uh, estimating maybe team share. So not just like just like I think it's maybe short, not short-sighted, but we could do more than just straight, hey, you you have this wide receiver, make sure you grab the quarterback. Well, maybe you want two of their wide receivers. Maybe you want their tight end. Maybe you want their pass catching running back. So kind of looking at what market share that you maybe were capturing on those and then how your team did and then correlating that uh, probably on some sort of trend line to see if, if it worked uh, or if you should be looking at more of smaller correlations. Uh, and those like big tournaments, for example, like week 17, people would stack, uh, let's see who played. Detroit and Green Bay played week 17 and it was yes. a crazy game, mm -hmm. right? Like the I don't know, 60 points or something insane. So people who probably stacked Christian Watson, Aaron, uh, I don't remember if Aaron Jones is fine, but you know, Aaron Rogers, uh, mm -hmm. Goff, and then yeah, uh, whomever they, they probably did very well week 17. So looking at those, not necessarily straight stacks, but correlations of maybe you should have had Goff and uh, Christian Watson, and then your team would have really went off those type of relationships and seeing which is more sticky seeing if anything's stickier if we're all just guessing. Yeah, it's also taking into the, the fact that, yeah, maybe you might have those guys in week 17, 18, but, you know, in week 15, you're, they're not necessarily going to have those kind of players. It's it's yeah. You're kind of looking for guys that can potentially um, just, just overperform their expectations. So I very much agree with you. It's it's definitely a very 
uh, difficult a process going into it and analyzing those kind of trends within, you know, which players could potentially pop off. But that's why there's only a, a couple of winners every year. So, and, and they they aren't usually they're you know cranking out 150 entries and just like exactly. I mean, they, they have models. They, those guys that are winning, they they are doing stuff like this and not publishing it. My goal is to I like publishing, I like writing, I like looking at it because I think it's fun. But uh, exactly, no, I agree with you. It's more it's more it's better talking about your processes than necessarily hiding it from people. And then when it doesn't work, you know, you can say like, oh well, he did a better had a better process than I did. What are you gonna do? Sometimes you take the L. Right. Um, so now going more into what you're famous for, your Dan dynasty and fantasy football trade value charts. You know, what kind of software did you use? It looks like a little more of Excel, but like you, some of you can do Excel, but you could also do it on different softwares. You know, what kind of processes did you sure. utilize going into that? How did you learn it? And like why did why did you get into it originally? And you know, what were your takeaways from it? Yeah, sure. So 2017 was the first year that I played fantasy football. And it was the first year I started making trade value charts because I have a problem. Uh, I started looking at some of the ones that were out there and I didn't really love them because they're all just straight linear. The way they present the data wasn't user friendly. Uh, and they had a lot of biases because uh, if you're just pulling, I mean, it's, it's, it's a numbers game, right? If your N is one, someone hates Aaron Jones, so they're going to have him way down the list. Well, maybe he's worth more. Uh, so it was looking at a way to average them. I did that in Excel, just kind of one one Saturday night, right? It was just home alone, just using like a, I used index matching, which showed that no one uses the names correctly. Like someone will put Zeke Elliott or someone Zeke Hill. So that mm -hmm. I built a, I built a uh, kind of a spreadsheet that would go through, look for matches versus a database index matching in Excel, pretty simple. You could use like VLOOKUP, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, I think index matching has a little bit, is a little more robust. Uh, and that's how I started. And then just kind of did a linear regression on some data to make an algorithm, applied it going forward. But eventually I had to, for the redraft ones, because I started adding more and more formats and more and more complex algorithms, uh, I moved up to R. So I do most of my work in R uh, for two reasons. One, it's free. Uh, <laughs> two, there's a lot of- better resource than that, right? Yeah, yeah, like, like in grad school, I learned, I did a lot of stuff in MATLAB and MATLAB would be great. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to pay for a subscription for MATLAB or yeah, just pay no, for it. So I was like, what? Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's plenty of free resources in R, if that's one you want to get into. Uh, Josh Larkey has a, a course that's focused on fantasy football, teaching you R with examples. It's a really good course. Uh, it's definitely, if you're getting, kind of getting your feet wet. A lot of people use Python. It's, hmm. it's not one that I've used a ton, but so I use R because it's free and that people build a lot of really robust packages. So I use, uh, to build the PDFs, uh, I don't, I don't remember which one it is now, but someone built that. So I can just kind of read through it, see how it works, and then kind of do that. Uh, but then on the back end, I'm using mostly Google Spreadsheets as the database. Uh, I'll write into Google Spreadsheets, open it with R, which is cool, uh, read in the data, shift it, write it back to Google Spreadsheets. And that's how you get the a lot of the, that's where I store all my stuff. And then Dynasty is going to just be done in Excel because it's, there wasn't as much, it was harder to automate than the redraft ones. The redraft ones were pretty point and shoot. Dynasty has a little more fuzziness to it. So I'll actually go through and kind of do those manually mm -hmm. to make sure that they seem reasonable a lot of the time. So those ones are a lot more labor intensive. Try and automate if you can, kids. Like, <laughs> Gotcha. So what goes into that value system when you finally get all that data? What? How do you stack up? each of those values, you know, on a scale of one to a hundred, like what, what processes go into it? I guess I'm not sure. You're... So when you have your scaling system, right, you have, yeah. you, you know, you have like Travis Kelsey's rated like a 75, I believe on some of your scales, what, what kind of data goes into that? Like, how do you scale on a scale of one to a hundred? Like from, Oh, so yeah. yeah, it's, so it's not, it's not a linear scale. It's a, it's more of a functional base that has a lot of inputs. Uh, that are, I mean, so we're looking at things like targets. We're looking mm -hmm. a lot of the time at what the market has, like what, how are the experts ranking that? Because everyone's on Yahoo or everyone's on ESPN. So that kind of dictates the market as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a, a big part of it. Um, what format you're in changes the scale. It's definitely not linear. It seems to, it, it, it goes by, uh, uh, it's like a poly. It, it, I used to use more of a, like a, a 
exponential or logarithmic, not logarithmic, but exponential, but I didn't really like the fit. So I switched to like a polynomial order and then correct it with a couple other factors to make sure that it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and then another issue is a lot of people will use sig figs too much, right? Like how confident are you in your data? How many decimal places should you have? The answer is almost always zero because <laughs> you mm -hmm. shouldn't be that confident in your data. 96 is the same as 95.5, but people will get hung up on that 0.5 and they just shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, it's definitely a, a lot to go into it because, you know, obviously the market has a different value than, you know, what that player might actually be perceived as, you know, from a, from a, from an expert standpoint. So there's so many different uh, ways to do that rating system. You know, I'm a big guy for volume and regression, even though some guy might get 12 targets, he might get, you know, one, you know, only like 20 yards in the week and vice versa. He might you know, have a Marcus Valdez scanling week where he'll just have 150 yards and three catches or Gabe Davis. Yeah. So what, you know, what, what is your kind of analysis more into volume and regression and like, what are your approaches to, you know, like analyzing that kind of data? Yeah, I think definitely looking at recent. So the, the, the just passing in the leagues change, right? So a lot of time people will look at typical, uh, you know, for every 12 catches, they should have a touchdown or whatever ratios and make sure that you're using recent data or at least weighing the more recent data more and then looking for those regression targets like uh, uh, Deontay Johnson, zero touchdowns on 150 targets. He's, he's probably going to get more next year. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, that, I, re I really hope so. My dynasty yeah. team hopes so. Oh my God. Like he's yeah. the biggest buy right now in dynasty for me. If, if mm -hmm. you can, if you have any faith in him, pick it, I guess. Uh, mm. But yeah, yeah, like looking looking for those kind of outliers. I mean, usually most players are going to be near league average. That's kind of how it works, uh, unless they are special. And then you almost, I was working on a, uh, like a normalizing that for player talent, but that's that's a whole nother conversation. I, that project I had to table because I just didn't have enough time. Uh, but yeah, that's, the, I mean, most things move back to the average is kind of the, it's the way of the universe. That's good to hear, you know, that, that kind of data um, working, you know, just analyzing volume is just so important because people are so caught up on the production and not the volume, but the yeah. background that goes into it. So now adding on to that, obviously you mentioned Deontay Johnson as a huge candidate going into 2023 now for a potential regression candidate. Who do you, what other guys do you think underperformed this year um, that you're expecting for a big comeback, at least just, you know, looking at it now? I mean, there's there. Well, I, Miles Sanders was one last year when his touchdowns. Uh, that's usually the one I look for the most because it's mm. not super sticky if you're high or low. Like Julio was kind of an exception to that, right? Two you mm. two. I mean, a bunch of years in a row. Yeah. But was he really the exception, or is it just our sample sizes are so small in the scheme of things, it's hard to exactly. really understand? Uh, I haven't done the analysis yet, but John T. Johnson's one that sticks out the most of like he's going to get more touchdowns. He absolutely is. I, I'm sure there's other ones, but I, I guess I haven't dug into that one specifically yet uh Eckler is probably one that's going to go down would be my guess he had a lot of touchdowns two years in a row but like the, the offense had more rushing touchdowns than it probably should have had uh that's that's a guy that I'm a little like Eckler's great he's going to be great mm -hmm. should he be the 101 no Maybe absolutely not, not. yeah no yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm very much in the same boat as you he had he's had a ridiculous amount of touchdowns the last two years and people are going to continue to draft him over an elite wide receiver or Christian McCaffrey next, next draft. So, um, yeah, if you, if you're doing drafts out here in February, two days after the Super Bowl, you know, take that into mind a little bit. Um, I mean, people, people are out there on underdog and, oh uh, no, I've, yeah, oh, I've, yeah, I've definitely did my feet in that a little bit <laughs> for sure. You know, the, the people are definitely taking advantage of that at least oh, now. That, 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 that's a great example of, uh, I, the guys I work with here, they have already jumped into that. And what they've noticed that people are going just, just going ham on quarterbacks. Oh, the first I saw. Two yeah. Rounds. Uh -huh. Yeah. In, insane. So that's one that's not sticky, right? Like mm. uh, the quarterbacks, the first six weeks of last season, the top five, uh, Hertz, Allen, Mahomes, uh, Lamar at the time. Is there anyone else? That was it, right? Yeah. They did. Much, mostly. Yeah. I think, I think and Herbert was an exception. He, yeah. he was drafted pretty high, but he didn't perform nearly as much yeah. and he got hurt. So, yeah, but they did so much better those first six weeks versus any other six week set that it was just obvious that they were going to come back down over the entire season. And oh, they easily. absolutely did. Mm -hmm. But the problem is people remember that first six weeks. Exactly. Because everyone was still playing that first six weeks, but week seven, week eight, you're, you're 0 and 6, 0 and 7. Yeah, you exactly. 
but I mean, Allen and, and uh, Hertz were going in the first round in a one quarterback week, just like, don't, don't do that kids. Don't, yeah, don't no, do that. <laughs> that's yeah. That's that blows my mind. The fact that, you know, you have, you have eight quarterbacks drafted within the first 60 picks. Like I thought JJ Zachary and, you know, his, his emphasis on late round quarterback was, was, you know, going to be the standard moving forward, but everyone remembers, you know, at least I remembered, I knew for a fact that the first four weeks, a lot of my teams did not do well because I stayed away. I went late round quarterback every draft. I, you know, I steered towards more, you know, the Matthew Stafford's, the Aaron Rodgers, the Tom Brady's of the world, the Dak Prescott. Yeah. Russell Wilson. Like it seemed like that was a gold mine in the, in the later rounds of the drafts, but you know, everyone's going to remember that those first six weeks, as you mentioned, and it's just going to be a pretty difficult like method when you're going into the draft thinking, Oh, I'm going to get a quarterback, you know, round eight and there's 12 quarterbacks already gone. So hopefully, but, hopefully but there's, yeah, hopefully there's a little change in the trend in that, but you know, that's your opportunity to gain value in your leagues though. In exactly. Your home leagues and whatever. Yeah. Like yeah, you, you can, you can probably grab Russ pretty late next year. And he, he's oh, one of those sure. that, what do you throw 13 touchdowns or 14, you know, just something insane. Less he had yeah. less touchdown passes than he had bathrooms for the longest time of the season. <laughs> yeah. Right? I love that. That chart was amazing. And that was, that Oh my God. Just hurt your heart. Right? Track of, yeah. Right. I felt bad for yeah. him at some points, but, um, yeah. but I mean, he's a, he's a guy that, I mean, he's, he's just going to regress at least towards his mean. He's, he's probably not done. He, he, it's hard to be that historically bad unless, unless you are just straight up done, I guess, but that's, it's hard to say that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, he he definitely. I, I couldn't I couldn't believe it myself. I mean, Hackett had a big factor into it, and you could see like the last two weeks, like the play calling was completely different. And he's he started to play a little, well a little bit. I mean, they scored like twenty eight points in a couple of games. Like they didn't score more than seventeen like, the entire season. So hopefully we get a little turnaround there, especially with Sean Payton. You know, I think there could definitely be some change within that offense. Um, but now going it more into your background within programming languages, data visualization. You mentioned that you worked with R and as well as Excel and other um, Matt, Matt Paulib, I believe you mentioned, or uh, whatever, whatever other data visualization methods, but you know, what is your advice towards, you know, people getting into that uh, industry, you know, like uh, people have mentioned that they're doing a lot more analysis through Tableau. You know, I mean, I use a lot of pivot tables, use a lot of Python. What, what kind of uh, ways are you, preaching towards your audience to get more into that and you know like what processes that you use I, I, I kind of even want to take a step back like you can make a lot of really cool tables or a lot of really cool graphs but if you don't define your variables and you don't explain yeah. what the heck it is it's useless mm -hmm. that's the like I'll see I'll see people tweeting graphs and stuff but like if you aren't explaining what the value of it that's more like a lot of the time less is more mm -hmm. less is more keep it simple People haven't been looking at that spreadsheet that you just spit out into a graph as long as you have. So like being able to communicate what you're trying to, to say or your, your results that really into a graphic or, or table or anything, uh, it's, it's like a skill that you should just practice a lot because a lot of the time it's, it's, it's hard to make really clean, really functional things. Uh, that's just, it's hard. That's one to really focus on, to find your variables, make it clean, less is more, uh, really, really explain what you're trying to do. And that'll make it a lot easier for people to consume your content and for, for people to be able to use it. Absolutely. Uh, I also forgot to mention, we had a, quite the game on Sunday. I want to hear your thoughts on a recent Super Bowl. You know, what were your, what were your thoughts on that call on the end? And just some of the other, I guess, trends that go into both the Eagles and the Chiefs moving forward after the Super Bowl in terms of fantasy, dynasty value, et cetera. I was I was excited that uh, Sirianni was going for it on fourth. Like that was I mean those moves that, that, that's fun, right? That's the analytical yeah. approach that of course go for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely think that uh that that uh QB sneak play that's got to get that that's gonna get oh my god that's gonna get eliminated. That's gonna get nerfed at some point. That that play is unreal. I've never seen a play have more success than like because you know you're they're gonna run it too. You know yeah. I think they're gonna do they're gonna make some rule where you can't like be lined up within a certain distance of the quarterback under center. But yeah, that, that just, yeah. that place is, that place unstoppable. And you yeah, see, like the, that, yeah. Yeah, they see like the Ravens, the Ravens were doing that this year too. They were, you know, running a lot with like Mark Andrews would come up to the quarterback and then someone would push him from behind. Like that's plays, plays unreal. 
Someone told me that, that that bit used to be illegal, and I, I didn't fact check it. But the pushing from behind used to not be allowed. Oh, okay. uh, maybe they maybe they go back to that. But I mean, that's yeah. what what were they thirty three for thirty six or something yeah. on that? Or just, something just, something crazy like, and and you know you see teams, uh, you know, the Closures uh, Chargers fans, but you saw you know that Travis Etienne play where they faked it and then they ran the little pitch like teams are starting to utilize different methods of it, you know, throughout the season. And it's just, it's really cool to see like those kind of, th those trends uh, play into action, you know, on the field as, as NFL defenses are adjusting, but. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I liked it. I, I mean, I'm a, I was a Chiefs fan. I'm from Missouri. So like it's hard. the, the play at the end. I mean, it was, it was holding, it was pass interference, mm -hmm. but it wasn't fun. I yeah. Oh no, fun. it wasn't fun. Yeah, I, I I was rooting for the Chiefs myself, but uh, yeah. I was the, I and I'm not an Eagles fan in any way, shape, or form. But um, yeah, like that that was the worst. I was like, what? That's like a terrible call. Like you can't you can't call that. And so you can call that during the regular season. No one's gonna bat nine against it. But the Super Bowl and changes the direct trajectory over it. You know, you can't really call that. But what are you gonna do, right? Or if you called it the other four quarters, I guess. Right. If yeah. Exactly. If you're playing yeah. that way, like either I, or. That, like, there's that 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 play is very much called. There should be called in almost every play, but you know that's I guess that's the way it's gonna be. But you know, do you have any insights from? You know, I I have a couple of shares in Devonta Smith and Dynasty, um, as well as you know Isaiah Pacheco it definitely popped off a bit. What players you see? You know, I, I, obviously after the Super Bowl, it's. You know, you see some, you see some guys have some promise. You know, what did you got? What did you take away from that? Yeah, I think so. If you roster Devonte Smith in Dynasty right now, you should be ecstatic. That dude mm -hmm. is. I mean, he's stud. He's, he's great. He's, he's a stud, stud, right? Yeah. Uh, if he wasn't across from AJ Brown, he'd be a stud, stud. Like mm -hmm. AJ Brown's just a man. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of exactly. my favorite players. <laughs> Pacheco's super interesting. Ch is still under contract. Yeah. Uh, but he'll be gone. I mean, being inactive. I mean, well, he's cheap enough. They they they'll probably keep him on the team. But like, exactly. How, it's I, I don't know that one's he's he's maybe. I'm probably not buying him in Dynasty, but I would mm. be. I don't know if you could sell him for value. Maybe you can. Maybe you can take mm. a shot uh, or include him in a larger trade. Would be what I would try and do. Like, see if you mm. can sneak him in for value on the way back. But uh, he's he's interesting. I mean, what are what are the Chiefs going to do at wide receiver? They're losing potentially several. Players, I mean, Mikol's free agent. Juju's a free agent. MBS might be cut. I think he was on a two-year deal, but his cap was yeah. pretty high for his production. Yeah. I, I expect him to be gone. I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do a complete overhaul at receiver, even though obviously they were they they produced in the Super Bowl. Sky Moore is still going to be around, but it's but interesting a, to see what's going on there. And it's amazing because uh, oh. they they bring they brought out a whole different squad of of receivers and weapons for the guy, and he's still, you know, Travis Kelsey and Co. They're, they're still yeah. they're still producing at the highest level so they absolutely got it done have you have you heard of the it used to be the 525 rule for rookies no what it, what is that it's a so a guy named a reddit user named quick quick on the draw mm -hmm. i think he was maybe the og 2016 he uh did a, an analysis backwards looking at rookies and then they're effectively per game production but if you have a fully healthy season on a 16 week season, rookies that hit 525 receiving yards statistically hit year two and on at a, like a 90% rate versus if you don't, it was like a 9% rate. Wow. Guy Moore did not hit 525. <laughs> well, people that are drafting next year, let's, uh, let's add that to the process a little bit, you know, we'll yeah. definitely going to have to look into that more. Um, Guys, you know, that's the second year breakouts are definitely a big, a big outlier, you know, between, separates the sky more from the rest of the world. Um, yeah. CH hit that number. Well, he's a running. Well, back. Yeah. Right. Specifically. Is there, for, is, uh, is there a running back? Yeah. Is, is there a running back statistic that, that, that's similar to that? I, I think if they're on the field. <laughs> yeah. Right. Literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, Naj, it's Naj, easier Naj, to. Yeah. Najee yeah. Harris will disagree with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was rough. It, it's easier to kind of do that backwards looking on uh, wide receivers because I mean, I, there's arguments that targets are an earned stat, right? That mm -hmm. you're not going to get a target just because you're I mean, asking Kenny call it that he didn't earn any targets. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you aren't out there earning it and then once you earn it, can you turn that into production? And, and then, so yeah, 525, I mean, what, what's 525? It's like 40 yards a game or something. Mm -hmm. 
that's I mean that's nothing. Like it's but yeah, that's but if you don't that hit literally it, is nothing. Yeah. Running backs, it's more of just uh, that a lot of time we're looking at snap share, uh, especially if it's trending up towards the end of the year. Like I think Jared Cook is interesting because he was, we started seeing it what we 14, 15, 16, 17, getting a little bit more involved, Singletary's potentially gone. Uh, is he going to take over? Is he going to, or maybe be just a, a lot closer 1B in that timeshare? Who knows? D. John Robinson to Buffalo. I think it's going to happen. I, I, even I, though they draft, I think Singletary's. I don't know. I, it still blew, it like blows my mind that single Terry is there. I really don't think he's that good. He always he always ceases to amaze me. He's just he's very productive in the in the touches that he gets. Yeah. See, my my guess on Bijan two weeks ago was pick thirty second overall, going to the Chiefs. That's what I picked. Oh, yeah. so it was a well. Hopefully, he's not Ceh again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be the or pick thirty one now. I guess he is uh, Dolphins. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Or even you know the Steelers have two first, uh, first round picks now. That's crazy. All right, so we're we're winding down here a little bit on the the Zoom call, but I just wanted to ask you um, what advice you know you mentioned that you've you know worked a lot with R. What advice do you have towards college kids getting more into data analytics? Like what 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 is your what would you say your biggest takeaway? Like your one piece of advice would be to to people getting into it. I mean, just. Don't, I mean, don't be afraid to put in reps. Like a lot of the time, what you're doing isn't going to be great. That's fine. Uh, you're, you're getting really reasonable skills that are going to get you, I mean, really good skills. Maybe you won't end up doing this later in life, right? But there's a good chance you're going to run some code in whatever your next job is and be able to automate something and just make your life a heck of a lot easier. Like, so just any, anytime you can learn a valuable skill like R or, or Python or anything, definitely just do it. Uh, Get good in Excel. Everyone uses Excel in, in, when you get out of college. Everyone uses it. Even for things they shouldn't be using it on, uh, everyone uses it. <laughs> so uh, just the more reps, the more you know, the, the, just the more actionable and easier you are to hire. Because at the end of the day, right, your goal is to get some sort of job and make some money. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. You know, data visualization, there's data in everything. So you're going to have to use it at some point. All right, Alex, can't thank you enough for com coming on to the Fordham Sports Analytics Roundup. We'll be dropping the episode pretty soon on our, on our social medias. Make sure you follow us at Sports Fordham on Instagram and Twitter. Um, we'll be dropping some highlights. You know, the podcast will be on YouTube. We just got certified for the Spotify and Apple Music versions of it. So coming awesome. soon to there. And uh, thanks again, Alex. Any last words? No, I appreciate you taking the time, Chris. I enjoy it. All right, thank you again.